Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and we're back with a super exciting comparison. You've seen the one that we did on Ting Liu versus Acheron, and here we are for the two Hus bundles of the patch of 2.1, two defensive units, and this is a very interesting comparison. Now, as always, the same thing of our which is a better investment video, I promise you that I'll be super unbiased, I'll be as honest as I can comparing the facts and logics between each of the categories, and towards the very, very end, if you care about my personal bias, I'll share with it right at the end as well. But anyways, first things first, the current value of characters. Who's actually a better investment right now in version 2.0, 2.1? That's the most important thing because if you are spending money right now, why not just wait for a rerun? What value can these guys give you exactly right now in 2.1? So very clear, I think the first thing that we need to distinguish, if you see here so many similarities, both defensive, both imaginary, what is the true difference between abundance and preservation? And that is very, very easy to understand. Abundance characters work best when your characters have very high HP pools. Let me give you an example. For example, a character like Blade has maybe 8k plus HP. Um, Aventurine, on the other hand, is a shielder type. Preservation units are generally shielders, which work much better for characters with very low HP. Why that is the case is because if you have characters that are squishy, maybe 3k HP, that shield acts as an effective HP increase. Slap on a 3k shield on a 3k HP character, they now can withstand a one shot of up to 6,000 HP. Whereas healing doesn't increase the max HP of characters, it just tops it up back to full. What this means is if your character is 3k HP, they take a 5,000 hit, they are immediately one shotted. No amounts of healing is better than that. So in that case, that is the true difference between a, a preservation kind of unit and more of an abundance kind of unit, and it's the nature of healing versus shielding. Uh, for that matter, given that we are out of really a hunt meta, not too many hunt characters currently in the game, it does feel that destruction, we just exited from like a destruction meta, which is more chunkier characters. Uh, it Logically, Lota should be better, but not to forget that Nihility as a class as a whole, which has been recently more popular, is getting a lot more love, and that they actually have stats very similar to the likes of Hunt characters as we, as we already shown on a data analysis kind of sections. Hunt characters, Nihility characters tend to be a bit squishier compared to Destruction characters, um, but Nihility is of course a slightly chunkier. Now that is the first difference between both of them in terms of current value. The next thing that you I want to talk about is which of them are generally a little bit more relevant. If you look at the current landscape currently in the game, the version uh, 2.0, 2.1, there are not too many monsters that suppress you, debuff you, and stuff like that. Previously, in the older versions, you had the Kafka boss that is able to like, crowd control your whole team. You have Kokolia who freezes and blah, blah, blah. Now, we actually don't have too much of that. Maybe some DOT dropping on the enemies, dropping on you, stuff, stuff like that. But not too much bosses that do debuffs. In that case, a character like Luota, who is very good at healing, cleansing, becomes less valuable for a character than a character like Aventurine, who is just able to soak up a massive amounts of damage. So currently in the game, cleansers not super meta, but you can see where I'm coming from. It could be a key difference when because Aventurine can't even cleanse at all, Luota can cleanse. So that's the first aspect of the current game state I want to talk about. The next game state, Aventurine not only plays into um, defensive teams, shielding teams, helping squishier characters, he is currently in a landscape that is favorable to a preservation unit a little bit more. Why do I say that? Is he's also a follow-up character, playing the trends of follow-up, playing the trends of nihility trending. You have a bit more requirement to do multiple DPSs. Like for example, you had the Kafka and Black Swan phenomenon where it's starting to shift instead of one DPS into two DPSs. Uh, you, you have, uh, for example, Akron that's coming into the game who's also seemingly much more gentle on the requirements rather than just being a pure hyper carry. In that sense, you want your defensive character to also contribute a little bit more for DPS. Yes. Between the two of them, Luota as well as Aventurine, Luota has an AoE imaginary break uh, strip in his out where he removes one buff. For now, that is like much less valuable compared to Aventurine's ability to do a lot of damage that skills off with his defense. So he not only provides a lot of shielding for your team, increasing their effective max HP, uh, doing damage on the side and playing to follow up teams for example like Topaz and Nambi and uh, Himiko as well as Herta who are all in the, the pure fiction game modes right now he can play into quite a lot of game modes because of his tendencies and where he trends towards and in my opinion right now in version 2.0 
I think that Adventuring has a much higher value compared to Luota. And I explained to you the many different facts. Does that mean Luota is useless? Not really. It's just in the current climate, Adventuring does seem much more favorable for the current trends. But let's move on with the second thing because not only do we have to care about their current value and who is better in the current climate, we need to also understand the alternatives of these characters. No point pulling a character, spending resources when you can easily find that in a four-star equivalent, in another equivalent whatsoever. And let's take a look at a character like Aventurine first. He's probably the easier ones. If you're looking for a thick, chunky shield and ability to do damage, actually it's not that easy to, to, to find, especially if you are also looking for a character that buffs the team and at the same time maybe able to um, increase uh, follow-up damage team's utility in, in totality. Um, not much alternatives there. But if you're talking about just a pure shielder, he kind of is like a limited 5-star equivalent of Japat. Thick, chunky shield. Japan has always been reliable throughout the times. But Japan has always been notorious for not contributing anything else other than that thick, chunky shield. Aventurine offers all of that that Japan does, but also so many things else that he does, which is their uh, alternatives. So if you are if you have never used Japan before, you never needed that shield, possibly you're just looking for a bit more of a damage dealer in a defensive role, which is what uh, Aventurine is like. And if that's the case, uh, Gallagher might be an option also if you're looking for a more offensive sustained unit so that is some of the things that I'm thinking about but really if you're looking for a follow up putting him in like follow up teams is very very strong it's similar a lot of sense to a character like Ho Ho where she's very good for energy restoration DPS characters that you're trying to like multiple main carry DPS that utilizes energy restoration rate um, Ho Ho is very good for that niche not so I think she's uh, very has a, got a lot more utility in that sense Luota, on the other hand, um, does has he have his alternatives. If you are looking for a character to cleanse, you have a free one like Lynx right now in uh, as of time of recording, of course. You have characters like Natasha. You have characters like Ho Ho. All these characters have some sort of cleanse in them, able to like remove bar. Even like, for example, March 7 also has cleanse. Bronya kind of has cleanse also. If I'm not wrong, her skill also cleanses. Uh, so cleanse is not very difficult to find. You can find it in a lot of cheaper options and, and stuff like that. And even Fu Shen, for example, has uh, one instance of mitigation. So you can find it in a lot of places. And of course, uh, didn't mention this, but of course, uh, Fu Shen also competes directly with Aventurine since they both also increase max effective HP. Although Fu Shen doesn't really do as much damage compared to um, uh, Aventurine on the field if you're looking for a bit more damage output from all your different characters. Luota, on the other hand, much easier to find. But what is the true difference between Luota and these other characters is... Luota doesn't need to use skill points to heal your team. Sometimes, on good games where the enemy doesn't do too much um, attacking, a fast Luota is a skill point funneler into your entire team. If you don't need to cleanse, you don't need to press his E, his AoE fail basically just tops your whole entire team up with HP because it works like a pseudo life steal mechanic where if you do damage, you heal a portion of your HP based on Luota's attack. If Lota moves very fast, you just keep attacking, attacking, attacking. You have his out up, you keep bursting, you can get the stacks very, very quickly. Most of the time, Lota can be very, very skill point positive, which is much more so than the other healers in the game, who in order to heal, you do require them to either use their burst, use their uh, E and stuff like that, which uh, might not be always very desirable, especially like links. If you want to draw the aggro up on one character, you need to keep up the E, which can be quite detrimental to overall skill points. Other than that, Luota also has an emergency heal, which also can cleanse. Anytime your character drops below 50%, immediately you just heal up that character, which is, I think, like super, super useful. Uh, you don't even need skill points for that. Very, very skill point positive. And that's something that's like not really talked about for a character like Luota. So those are kind of like his alternatives. In terms of stripping buffs, you have like uh, Pella also able to remove buffs from the enemies as we kind of know from the Sienzo Luofu art where you needed to remove buffs to prevent the enemy bosses from healing and whatnot. For now, there isn't like a huge requirement to remove enemy buffs as of yet. It seems like what we are trying to do, the Hoyoverse is going into, is really um, focusing on debuff-oriented units and follow-up attacking and bringing out more out of four characters rather than just like hyper-carrying one particular unit so far. Uh, in order to wrap up this like current value section, I want to talk about a few characters that work very well with I think either of them. If you are a Blade player, Blade is your main DPS, Luota will add a lot of value compared to Aventurine. 
why, where, and I think this, let me just like put this down here and let me just add on this current value section back because this is a bit of, uh, of additional value that I want to give to some of you who are really deciding between the two of them. Some characters want to take damage. Some characters want to lo lose life. There is no point having a character at one HP and a massive thick shield if they need to lose life to do damage. Um, maybe to some extent like Jing Liu because she needs to set the HP. Um, to some extent, Arlen, who is like unfortunately not meta. Some characters, maybe Ting Liu can be working with both, but you understand like the concept. If your character needs us to needs to lose HP and are relatively chunky, uh, Luo Cha is gonna feel a lot better with them. So in future, maybe we have maybe Sam, who knows, might be a HP sapping character. That could be very interesting as well if you are planning a pool for a HP sapping character. Abundance is very good, and out of all of them, I play with like almost every single abundance character so far with Blade and Arlen and whatnot. When you lose HP, the one that you really want on your team is Luo Cha. It's just so easy to play. Very, very comfortable, cushy. You can auto-battle almost everything because they just synergize so well with each other. In my opinion, there is no choice. No, it's, it's very clear. If you play Blade, you play Luo Cha. It's, it's, it's like peanut butter and jelly. You can't argue with that in, in most sense. You don't really want to play Blade with Aventurine. And that is, I think, the, the key difference between both of them. Other than that, if you don't care about the whole meta and stuff, if you are playing with follow-up characters, for example, like Topaz and Nambi, you like the follow-up mechanics, like maybe some sort of Ting Yuan, you're playing uh, Himiko, Herta and stuff, uh, revolving around follow-up teams like Dr. Ratio. This is like an imaginary team right here, right? So I would actually prefer if you are like a Dr. Ratio fan, you love him non-stop and you're thinking to have a full imaginary team, I probably will go maybe a bit more with Aventurine and Dr. Ratio rather than Luo Cha. Because if one day you do have a Yu Kong at E6, all your characters can do damage rather than just like having Luo Cha wasting one turn on Yu Kong's turn order. That is like something that I would be thinking about. So that is my perspective on which characters are better currently in the game state for each of them. Uh, and that's the value add. So now, of course, as we know, talking about current meta is important and current game state. But what's actually more important is looking out for future value. How well would these characters change with time? Would they still be really, really relevant? And to be honest, it's very tough for a character who has been released like way back in 1.1. He was a beta character in like one of the first few CBTs or so. So Luo Cha has been around for forever. And the, the fact is, he still will stand the test of time and he's still relevant today. And the fact that we are watching this video and actually cons comparing them side by side is that they are still relevant units to pull so many many months in almost one year in now uh, and I think that Luo Cao is likely still skill with time he still will be relevant and not totally redundant the question is is the flavor of the month future value let's talk about these two characters in essence if we are going to have future characters that have sapping mechanics life steal or, or like needs to lose their life to do damage maybe like Sam robot he has this in fiery blaze thing uh, maybe if that loses life I think Luo Cao's value will go up a lot more he feels very very cushy to play if we are talking about follow-up team compositions, you want more of your team members to do more follow-up, I think that uh, possibly Dr. Um, uh, Aventurine is going to be much better in that sense where he plays into all these verticals as well. If you have enemies who hit in an AoE and very, very, a lot of damage, doing massive amount of damage like 5k, 6k each time, I think Aventurine will have a lot more value in that sense. So it's depending on how the game direction wants to go. The biggest critical thing I think about Aventurine that a lot of people might not talk about is how good his alternatives are in a character like Fushen. Why would I want to play a character like Aventurine instead of Fushen most of the time given that both of them are very very strong units. I like Fushen a lot. She has damage mitigation which I think is a lot better than shielding. Um, but one thing for sure is probably the reasons why you want to play Aventurine is either into a mono imaginary team, a follow-up team, or you want to scale off with defense and doing some damage off the side while keeping your team members safe as well. And you have maybe some other character that is able to like self-cleanse or cleanse your team so you don't care too much about that. But it's still very, very tough between um, these characters and Fu Shen is the strongest competition in my opinion versus uh, Aventurine, which we'll talk about as the time goes by closer to his banner. But for now, some of you are making plans to decide one of these imaginary defensive units to compare. Future value for Luo Ta. Cleansing is very important. Skill points is very important. If we come back to a debuff meta where enemies are controlling our units and stuff like that, Luo Ta is going to become even more relevant. More HP sapping characters, Luo Ta is going to become more relevant. A need to strip enemy buffs, remove their buffs, Luo Ta is also going to be a bit more relevant too. But I can see arguments for both of them. I would consider this category as like mostly neutral. And it's very difficult as you can see as we are logically comparing both of them. They are kind of like split in the middle. 
it really depends on what characters you have, what you need, and also the current game state that is going towards. The only thing that eventually re wins up till now is probably currently Hoyoverse wants to sell new characters more so than putting benefit for older characters, which is quite impressive because an old character like Luota is still fighting very, very strong so far. The last, the second last part rather for the future category that we want to talk about is not alternatives, is potential. Potential is something that is more uh, subjected to change because it's more of like fantasy and what I think might happen of Hoyoverse trends. And I'll explain why with this single example. Will Hoyoverse plan to sell more IPC characters in future? We already have Topaz and Numbi. We already have, now we have added in a character, for example, like Aventurine. We're going to have new characters, maybe a character like Diamond or what other gems there are in the game that they plan to release. If they are planning to make IPC a faction of all characters having like follow-up synergies with each other, I think that then it will make sense to play into an Aventurine vertical because it scales very nicely with time. The more IPC characters you have, you form a team of IPC. Could be niche, but at the same time, it's also a fun angle of approaching things if you like the faction uh, to begin with. Whereas Lota doesn't really have too much of verticals he plays in. If you're talking about canon, law, uh, it's really about forming with like Blade. That's in, in, in essence. I don't see his story maybe developing much further or any reason to invest too much more in his story other than for the fact that he maybe looks like a character in another Honkai game. Um, but it's much more clearer that uh, IPC storyline law has much more incentive for Hoyoverse to develop and to invest more in these characters and their synergies with each other to try to sell all of them. And if future characters can help sell existing characters, like the arrival of Aventurine is helping Topaz and Nambi, in my opinion, that's like stonks, right? Like what other characters benefit you also. I don't see that happening as much with Lota. And to some extent, I think that's when uh, Aventurine does benefit a little bit more because of the factions that he plays in with just slightly more in the agendas that Hoyoverse might try to sell. And the last category of, before I go into my own bias thoughts, is the free-to-play kit. I think that Lota works fantastic at an E0, S0. E1 is probably the worst E1 in the game for Lota. The attack percentage of 20% for his fail, you can just get a no whole new, like, limited character for that. I think Luota is very, very fine at E0, S0. In fact, I would want to have him at E0, S0 if I could get a refund. Hoyoverse, please. Um, very, very good light cones available for a lot of Abundance characters. Um, Aventurine is also not too bad at E0, S0. You have a lot of free-to-play S0 options too. Uh, very versatile. You can put him with Trend of Universal Market to have DOT application for more debuffs when enemies hit him. You can even play like more offensive ones since he skills off with defense. You can use a lot of defense gears that you have, which increases the utility of your overall account. Luota wants relics that are attack and speed, which a lot of your other DPSs might also want. So in that sense, I would give it to Aventurine to be slightly advantaged in this sense because Luota's relics requirements might contest with some of your other characters in the game, whereas all your junk defense gear now has a use if you're pulling for Aventurine. Um, both amazing characters, but here comes the fun part in my opinion. Who is my personal bias? I think if you are a person that likes Blade, or I like Blade, very clear, my choice is simple. I'll pick Luota. If I already have Luota and Blade in my team, I would likely want to pick up Aventurine because he scales very nicely into the verticals that are going on in future. Between the two of them, if I don't have either, I don't have Blade, I will be more inclined to pick uh, Aventurine up rather than Luota because for cleanse, you can find it easily in a lot of other characters and skill, they are generally quite skill point positive also. Luota just have it all in one convenient package. Um, but I think for the verticals, the benefit he gives in a long time, Aventurine does sound like a bit more logical uh, choice to be made, especially when you look at the other defensive characters in the game. None of them offer offensive kits, maybe with just the arrival of Galaha and some extent Fushan if you can burst very often with her. Other than that, not too much damage dealers in the Abundance def and Preservation category. And that's my personal judgment. A character that can do damage from a defensive role is likely going to see value, especially with all the things we talked about. I think Aventurine will be my pick for this video. And let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below too. Um, and if you found this video helpful, we have another one for Jing Liu and, and Akron as well. Check it out if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.